Hi, Martin here. So today we're going to lower this uh, 2004 Jeep Grand Cherokee. This installation will be typical of a 99 through 04. Um, I just recently got the 20 inch wheels on here. Um, this is These tires are actually a little bit overstock size, but yet once you get the 20s on here, you know, you're seeing this gap here and over here, and this one here is just a little too much. Um, so I, I got the Eibach Pro Kit. It comes with four springs. This is going to be, I think, relatively easy installation. And we're just going to lower it one inch in the front, 1.3 in the back. And I think that's going to fill in that wheel well, you know, even up these gaps right in here. I think it's going to look really good with the 20 inch wheels on here. Uh, give it that street look. Uh, and then it, the kit that I got is the uh, 2837.540. Uh, these were right at $300 shipped to the door. So a pretty inexpensive lowering kit and it should handle a lot better too. All right, well, let's get started. Okay, you're going to want to start by raising your vehicle up, and I'm doing it on the frame. Right now, I've got it on the uh, transmission cross member, and uh, remove your tire. The reason is, do not put it on the axle, because I want to get as much of this tension off of this spring as I can. Okay. Um, also, we're going to disconnect the shock, and probably the sway bar. What I'm trying to do is get the axle to drop as much as I possibly can, and hopefully, I don't even need a spring compressor to do this. We'll find out. I brought the spring compressor just in case. Okay, I've just pulled the nut off on this side here. We've got the bolt right here. Um, I'm just gonna drive this bolt out. And I've also supported the axle with another jack right here, just so it doesn't drop suddenly when we pull the pull the sway bar bolt out, okay? Lower it just a tiny bit. Right there. There we go. If you get this uh, raised axle to the proper height, the bolt will pretty much come right out. Okay, so we got that disconnected. Right, now I'm going to lower the axle. Nice and gently. Keep on going. Look at that. What does it take to get one of these? There we go. And just like that, we got the front one out. All right. Now, when you pull off your spring, and now we got our new one right here. This stop right here, there's a spot, there's a low spot in this rubber grommet down here. And that's where you want to put that spring back in. Simply push it on there, just like that. You look right down here. This is where the end of that spring, see? There's that spring right there. You're going to turn it to that position right there. Now at this point, I'm just going to simply jack the... I'm going to simply raise the vehicle's axle again and guide this into place. And when you're doing that, you're going to make sure that the, the grommet lines up properly with where it used to. You see right up in here where the end of the spring used to be? You can see that nice dark spot. Well, we got the end of our spring right here. So we're going to make sure when we jack this up, that's where we're going to fall into that right there, okay? Do 
just like that. Perfect. Now at this point, I'm going to raise things back up. Get our uh, sway bar hooked back up again. Right, getting real close there. Right there. Okay. Now we can get our shock hooked back up on this side and uh, put the tire back on even and we'll move to the other side. I just want to show you where I got the uh, hydraulic jacks here. One there on the transmission cross member. And then I'm using another one right here on the uh, axle. All right, lug, lug nuts removed. And the vehicle raised to the proper height. Now before I actually raise the vehicle with the other jack, this is a good time to disconnect the shock and the sway bar, since there isn't really a load from stretching it all out. Need to raise the axle a little bit to get the load off of that sway bar. There it goes. Now when you raise the vehicle back up to get the load off, you'll notice it right away when this gets nice and loose and you pull that bolt right out. Okay, now we can lower the axle. And raise the vehicle. Look at that spring. There we go. Just like that. Grab under that spring. Pop that off of there. Grab your new spring. You'll see the. I got this like uh, protective coating on here, and it's like uh, it's tighter up in here. This is probably your softer part of the ride, right? Th right in there. Uh, always goes toward the top. Okay, just like before, right there's your stop. Um, you can remove these if you want to have a look. This looks pretty crusty under here. You're gonna be surprised. Look at that. Now, it only goes on one way. You got this little uh, nub right there and a hole right there in your uh, in your spring bucket. So line that up. Put that on. Now just force that on. It's not real hard. There, it snaps right into place. A little effort. And then line up the end of the spring with that stop right there. 
At this point, we're ready to raise the, vi the axle back up. And the way it looks, you're going to have to end up rotating this because this ends up in a different spot than it did before. If you look right up in here, you can see where the uh, where the spring used to end. There. Line that up, just like that. Perfect. Okay, we'll raise the vehicle back up. Get this aligned. I'm going to let the other jack down just a little bit. together again, you know, hook up the shock and the sway bar, install the tire, retorque everything properly. Now we're to the back. Raise the vehicle with a, on the axle with one jack, remove the tire, and then we got the uh, frame supported right here with another jack. So, next step would be to disconnect the sway bar right here, or here, either way and the shock at one end or the other. And then we can start raising this jack right here and uh, we should hopefully be able to do the exact same thing we did in the front, no spring compressor. Okay, I'm gonna loosen the top bolt on the shock here, get that bolt out. sway bar bolts, 15 millimeter for both. Okay, I got the vehicle jacked up quite a ways so far. Now I'm gonna let the jack down that's actually holding the axle up. And there you can see the spring coming out of the pocket there. And just let that axle come on down as far as it will go. You may have to just pull it down a little bit. There we go. All right, got our new spring here. This is kind of like the front. I mean, you got specific spots on the rubber part. All right, right in here. You see that spot right there? That's where the end of the spring goes into. And then on these eye box springs, if you're wondering what the, which side is up, they have writing on them right there. The writing's upside down, you got the spring in upside down. Okay, and we turn the spring right in there just like that. Now you can see that this spring is a little bit shorter. Makes perfectly good sense. 
so it's much easier to get in. Now we can go ahead and jack the axle back up. Just like that. And now at this point, we can go ahead and hook the sway bar back up and your shock absorber. The two bolts are absolutely identical. All right, now bolt the tire back on, torque it properly, and repeat the process on the other side, and uh, we'll be done. So something I didn't realize, um, at the time I put the springs in, I didn't think the bump stops was gonna be an issue at all. Um, now I've been driving on this now for a couple months since I installed them, and um, it, uh, I think the springs are settled in just a little bit, and I would highly recommend, you know, cutting off some of the bump stop. And of course the time to do it is when the spring is not installed and the shock is out and you can get easily get in here and just trim it off with a sawzall or a hacksaw blade or something like that. Um, and here you can see there's a piece I did cut off. And that's just half an inch. Um, and that was pretty good actually I would uh, I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna actually cut off just a little bit more because I can still feel it kind of hitting you know it's a little rough at times but uh, just taking off this half inch made a huge difference in the ride it's not so harsh because it does bottom out hitting that uh, bump stop constantly all time down here so again yes spring with the springs removed the shocks out of the way get right in there trim it off both front and back um, that make a big difference All right, well, there you have it you know I really like the uh, stance that it gives the uh, vehicle helps really fill in the wheel well right here and uh, it really equals it out all the way around the uh, tire and the wheel well um, I did notice a, uh, a stiffer ride in it and um, the one thing I do like I mentioned is cut those bump stops off while you still got the springs out make the whole job a lot easier you know you're gonna lose a little bit of your ride that you had before so it's, it's a little stiffer and um, but other than that I love the way it turned out and I definitely wouldn't go back All right well thanks for watching and please subscribe give me a thumbs up thanks